Good morning, YouTubers. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is Friday, uh, finally. Uh, it was a stressful week this week, I gotta be honest. Um, a lot of crazy, a lot of head pounding. Um, the week just kept getting stressful and stressfuler. Um, literally, when you try to talk to people uh, about gold and silver, and people just don't understand what is going on. I mean, Janet Yellen coming out and saying that, yes, some banks are a little bit, you know, stressed out, a little stressed, but not the end of the world. Um, Jerome Powell coming out and saying, let's uh, be patient with interest rate lowering. A lot of people want to see the interest rates come down, but we're going to need to be patient a little bit. You know, let's be honest. They haven't gotten nothing right lately, it seems like. Whatever they say... They seem to either do the opposite or the opposite ends up happening. What do I mean by that? I mean, originally we've talked about this before, but, you know, inflation, there's no inflation. Inflation's transitory. Okay, there's a little inflation. Okay, it's inflation, but we're trying to keep it at 2%. Okay, so let's go with 2% for a year. Let's go with uh, historical 2%. I don't know. And just, it's excuse after excuse. Silver, not really doing a whole lot. Not going up, not going down. Uh, talking in the comments. Some of you guys that follow Discord, it's free to join Discord right now. Um, so please, if you're interested in joining, I will put the link below this video. So you can click on it and join the Discord. Um, but yeah, it's frustrating. It's a little frustrating. We're not seeing it go down. We're not seeing it go up. We're kind of just seeing it metal around. So we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the silver markets, what's going on in the markets, period. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button for me. Uh, leave me a comment. And if you're not subscribed, please take a quick minute and hit that subscribe button because it really does help the channel out. Uh, I pretty much do this because I, I love talking about it. And, you know, sometimes... I'll be honest, I do take stuff a little personal because the numbers are just outright not actual. Um, and what I mean by that is we're seeing, man, what is going on? I'm trying to, my camera just did something funky. Um, we're just seeing just crazy stuff happening. You know, we're seeing huge amounts of revisions now. Whenever big numbers come out, it seems like they get revised right off, not too long after. Nobody pays attention to revisions. Uh, you post some crazy numbers um, in mainstream. Everybody sees it. Everybody reports on it. And then after that, they revise it. And if they even put it in public news, it's buried on the back of the newspaper. Um, so it's kind of crazy where people are going, what people are seeing with this. Uh, I'm utilizing this opportunity to stack. Um, question gets asked to me a lot. Are you buying right now? What are you doing? Uh, you know, the truth of the matter is I'm still buying, but I am slowing on my buying because we're in a stagnant spot right now. Um, I have a belief that we're going to see it continue to go down a little bit, but then we're going to see just a, a crazy jump all at once. And why do I think that? Um, we've had our previous lows. Uh, we've seen it dip just below 21. Then we've seen it dip again just above 21. Um, and I think the next one, we might see it get down to 21.50. Uh, what we're seeing, it seems like to me, is you know the highs are coming in a little higher. When you when you follow the charts, you're seeing the highs just take off a little higher. You're seeing the lows, uh, you know they're not as low as the previous low. Uh, days of 18, sub 20, those are over. Could we see some crazy thing happen? Yeah, I mean we could see the stock market take a 20, 25 percent hit. Um, but how long will that last? Yes, I, I can't deny when people say that if the stock market drops by 20, 30% in a week's time, there's going to be a lot of uh, margin calls coming in. When margin calls come in, for those of you that don't know what a margin call is, let's say you buy a share of XYZ and XYZ costs $100 a share. You say you want to margin it at a four to one ratio. And now you have four shares of XYZ. If XYZ goes up 
you essentially just made 40 bucks. Um, but if XYZ goes down $10, you just went down 40 bucks. Well, here's the thing. You only have one share of XYZ at $100. So essentially, your one share now has a $60 value um, when you look at it like that. And here's the thing. What's stopping it from going down $20? If XYZ goes from $100 to $80, you're basically net worth on that stock is now only $20. Um, and then if it should happen to fall much lower than that, you can be not only margin called, but position sold instantly. And a lot of people don't understand the dangers that come with margins. You know, back in the old days, during the Great Depression, there was heavy margins, extremely heavy margin positions, because there was no way people thought that the stock market could go down. And unfortunately, a lot of people have forgotten about that nowadays. They think that, you know, the worst downturn, if you can weather a little bit of a storm, is not the end of the world. Now, hopefully most of us aren't using margins. Um, I know some people that collect silver and gold or stack it, collect it, whatever, invest in it. They also have cryptos. They also have um, stocks, bonds, 401ks. I talk to a lot of people that, you know, they, a good percentage of people out there have a small paper investment in precious metals. And I've got to specify small and paper because a lot of financial advisors will tell you to be safe, you should have a 5%. But here's the thing, when you look at the U.S. debt clock and you see, um, that there's 188 shares of paper silver for every one ounce of silver. When it really comes down to it, I mean, what do you think is going to happen when that silver ain't there? You're definitely never going to take custody of it. However, you might be able to um, utilize that paper and actually take paper cash profits. But who knows what could happen to the dollar. And I know a lot of people have this belief that the dollar can never collapse. And and maybe they're right. I just don't believe that. Uh, I believe that any fiat currency or any kind of money that is made out of paper, for the people that don't know, you know, fiat currency, it's okay. Uh, fiat currency is just paper money. Um, it gives the governments of the world the basically ability to double the money supply instantly like we've seen in Venezuela, like we've seen in Weimar, Germany. Um, and when that happens, it basically takes away the purchasing power of all the other bills that are out there. It erodes your savings. You've been saving all your life, and it's gone. And I think at a certain point, when the majority of the system is not working, um, whether that means physically or just technically, um you're going to see something. They've got to instill something in the money to make people go back to work. Now, I've always said that I think we could go back on a gold or a silver or gold and silver standard. I know some people have commented on that before and said maybe a gold standard will never see silver play a part because obviously it is too industrial. It's too much used for industrial. And to a certain point, you know, you could be right. It's heavily used for industrial demand. However, the thing that these people, these same people don't realize is that argument that they're saying right there is, oh, they manipulate the price of silver down because the demand is just too high for basically technology and basically just cell phones, panel, solar panels, cars, whatever the case may be. But that same argument is the argument that should be being used to why the price of silver has the ability to go up. The manipulation, I mean, you got to ask yourself, who's manipulating the silver? Who is this they? I, and I have seen that in a comment. Who do you think they is? I mean, you say they manipulating. Who's they? I mean, think about it. Who has the ability to manipulate the price of silver down or the price of gold? Uh, it's a little harder with gold because of the sheer amount of money involved in it. But you take silver... It's not as hard to manipulate. It's obviously banks. But when banks get in trouble, do they still have the money, the capital, as the prices go up 
on silver, do they want to eat them losses to try to manipulate and keep the price down? A lot of people don't really understand even what happened with GameStop. GameStop was a a stock. Um, some of y'all know what GameStop is. You just don't know the full story behind it. It was just a stock. And there was actually a YouTuber out there that uh, his name was Roaring Kitty. And he started telling his subscribers that he was buying GameStop. Not a financial advisor, just, you know, his opinion. It's an undervalued stock and there's huge bets against it, trying to drive it down lower and lower in price. And all of a sudden there was a big movement that basically his subscribers and people just started buying it. And as the price slowly started to climb, more people got on board. And that's kind of why I think they don't want to see any kind of price climbs right now. I think when we've seen the price climb to $29, really fast, I think they were doing all they could to beat it down again. Because if too many people see gains, it it spreads the hype. People start talking about it. And as they talk more and more about it, that's it. They lose control. Now, here's the thing. I'm not convinced they can keep beating it down forever. But it's a possibility they can do it for a little longer. Now, eventually, when it does break through... It will take probably the banks being in trouble again, just like in 2008 when you think about it. The banks got into trouble. That started the the movement. Once we started seeing it go up, by 2011, we were just seeing it screaming up. Now, what changed everything? A lot of people don't really understand what changed uh, from 2011 all-time high of silver to 2012. Well, a lot of that had to do with the ETFs that came out. Once there's an ETF, they can manipulate the price any which way they want. Kind of like we saw oil get manipulated down to negative $40. Hey, I got a barrel of oil. If you take it off my hands, I'll give you 40 bucks with it. I mean, think about that. The work and the effort that goes into it and they're just giving it away, it doesn't make sense. Nothing really makes sense anymore. Um, So yeah, I do bang my head on the wall sometimes, or at least I want to. And I think eventually we're going to see some action. And once it moves, that's it. A lot of people are going to miss the boat. A lot of people are going to be upset. And then the people that get in that were upset are going to be the ones that get in at an all-time high or when it's up there. And then they're going to lose money because maybe we'll see a pullback. And then they'll be the ones crying about it. Silver goes to 50. Oh, whoop de doo It hit its all-time high again. Then it goes to 100. whoop de doo And then all of a sudden, 120, 130, and they want to buy in. They want to buy in, and then all of a sudden the price starts coming down, and they're the ones left crying that, oh, I should have, I never should have, I knew, you know, while the rest of us are taking profits. So with that being said, that's going to end today's video. Please make sure you take a quick minute to hit that thumbs up button for me, help the channel out. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care, everybody. It's going to be a great weekend. So have a good one. Thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.